Okay, hey guys. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna just briefly run through lah. Huh? This is like old news already. So uh, please mute yourself. Um, there's gonna be Q and A session for other uh, uh, in different intervals. Uh, any difficulties, please uh post it on the chat. Someone will help you. Basically, I will help you lah. Huh? Um, and then enjoy yourself. This is a casual session to us to talk about all things crypto tonight. We're gonna talk about the bear market. Um, okay, next slide. Uh, yes, so the agenda for tonight, three sections. Um, first thing, bear market, recent catalyst, um, and then we're going to talk about near-term events. The second thing is that, oh, bear market, what should we do, right? What are the advices we can, we can share? Uh, I think more, more importantly for me personally, I'm looking forward to the rotation place. We're looking for the stablecoin farm. I think that's very interesting. Uh, and the third thing is that, uh, the third section is basically how do we invest in this bear market again this is not all non-financial advice uh we just want to share our thoughts on it um it's not a uh, advice for you to buy any coins and whatnot like crypto highly volatile um always invest what you are willing to lose lah. um so that's the three three sections we're going to share this uh, this evening um with that said you know my name is jackie for those of you who don't know this is clinton who have been with us since the beginning um and with that i will pass over to clinton okay hi everyone so um yeah like last week we talked about nfts right that's like super rara topic uh this week not so rara but still very very important uh so let's talk about like what's going on in the market right um i think um, a lot of people who joined the market from mid last year will be used to this like crazy trajectory of growth um, right now that a lot of this is halted. So the first thing is, you know, BTC price peaked in November and then that's declined to about like 41K currently. Um, similarly, ETH declined as well from almost 5K to like around 2.75 now hovering. Um, but, you know, even more uh, significant, altcoins have corrected quite a lot. Uh, most, most of them 50 plus percent uh, from all-time highs or even greater. And I think the last two weeks have been particularly harsh on NFTs. Uh, you saw daily volumes like almost half and it's still going down. And a lot of the floor prices, uh, you know, are actually correcting uh, quite significantly. Um, so what's really happening, right? Uh, I think uh, what I noticed personally in, in the market is that a lot of people who are in crypto uh, don't spend so much time on the macroeconomic environment. Like, you know, they focus a lot on coins, tokens, ecosystems, um, but uh, it's very important to set the context. So um, most of us have been living in this period of easy money. So um, loose monetary policy, low interest rates. Um, this was supposed to you know, be corrected at some point, but we had this thing called COVID and COVID really continued this uh, easy money period. So you saw a lot of um, uh, growth going down, right? People worried about the pandemic and governments continuing to keep very loose monetary policy. Um, however, like the, the downside of this thing is that during the COVID period, uh, you know, a lot of inflationary pressures started to creep up. So supply chain issues particularly, you know, was very prominent. And last year, there was already a lot of panic about uh, rate hikes. So you will see on the graph on the left, right, um, you can see this pretty major correction. Uh, that was during the panic period where they thought that the Fed would raise interest rates. Uh, but once this sort of period flew by, right, there was a very sharp uh, correction back up. So, um, and now we're in this like funk again. So um, what's happening is that, you know, this low interest rate environment actually coincided with, you know, this super cycle in growth and risk assets. And a lot of them have been correcting, uh, you know, within crypto and outside of crypto. Outside of crypto, it's very important to talk about some of these corrections. Um, for example, uh, if you look at growth companies, right, these were really dominating the headlines for a very long period of time. Uh, many of them were funded by VC, growth equity, PE capital, and um, a lot of them have gone down like crazy. So the old playbook was like just raise a lot of money, IPO at high valuation, and then you pray that after valuation, after IPO, valuation pops even more. Um, but I think reality right now is that if you look at the growth companies, most of them have corrected by 50 to 75%. And Bear in mind, right, this is equity market. These are stocks, you know, supposedly blue chip stocks that people have been hyping about for the last like few months, last year. Um, so ARK Invest is Cathie Wood's flagship fund. And you look at the performance over the last year, it's almost down 50%. Um, so in light of this, what we're talking about today is even more pertinent, uh, if you think about it, given that crypto is often seen as one of, you know, a really risk on asset. Um, what's also happened recently, which was kind of maybe not as expected, is the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, this is a completely exogenous event. 
but in one line, the impact is really on all prices. You've really started to see it. Those of you who drive, uh, I'm sure you've, you know, when you are at the petrol chaos, you might have gotten a shock of your life at the prices. Um, and this has put more pressure, right? Because last month, the US Consumer Price Index, which is often seen as a benchmark for, you know, global inflationary pressures, hit 7.5% increase. So that's a pretty large number. Um, this also creates a very challenging issue for governments because uh, the main tool to combat interest rate, uh, you know, being really hard, uh, the main, sorry, the main tool to combat inflation is to raise interest rates. But because of this invasion, you know, governments are a lot more cautious in terms of how they're going to raise the rates. Uh, but we've already seen rotation of growth assets. So like, if you look at the previous slide, um, basically you can see a lot of these growth stocks are tanking. Uh, you know, capital is moving into like commodities, uh, you know, energy and, you know, stocks like that. So um, why is this super important, right? Um, a lot of people don't really spend time on the, the correlation between crypto and equities. Uh, some people even think that it's kind of divorced. But the truth is, if you look at recent trends, right, crypto has actually been trading at super high correlation to the NASDAQ. So if today, you, you, you know, at night when you check your phone, right, like when US market opens and NASDAQ is down, you can be almost sure that, that you know, the overall crypto market will be down by a similar factor. Um, up to now, there's been no depegging of crypto versus growth equity. So because of this correlation, you know, it moves in lockstep. And crypto is very much still seen as a risk on asset at this point. Um, and basically what this means is that you know, what moves equity markets will move crypto. So um, if you haven't spent that much time on Bloomberg and you know, other news outlets, it's also time to, to really uh, pay more attention because a lot of these events will actually have a huge impact on crypto prices in at least the near term. Um, what are some event risks? So uh, I put this from the QCB Capital Report. Uh, it's a great report. I encourage everyone to read it. Um, but essentially, the, uh, the, if the key events that will be very risky for the market are tied to you know, the Federal Reserve and the rate decisions. Um, so the markets have been extremely engrossed in the timing and size of the first hike. Uh, what happened was that the, the Fed chairman actually stated that they will have a 25 basis points hike uh, for 16 March. That was widely expected. But um, it will be very important to look at the next number that comes out on the 10th. Uh, if the inflation number is super high, uh, higher than the 7.5% we saw, right? Uh, this might trigger, you know, more sort of, uh, might trigger deeper hikes uh, for the May timeframe. But for this timeframe, I think um, the commitment from the Fed is that they will be fairly conservative. So uh, please pay attention to these dates. Uh, oftentimes, the crypto market moves about a week before the dates. There's always speculation. Uh, so, you know, please pay attention because these decisions will have a very big impact uh, on how the market moves in the near term. Um, the war is also very important. Uh, I think it's been very um, sort of uh, difficult for many of us to understand what's going on. Uh, but I think what, what's broadly the issue is also no one knows how long this will last. But based on the current indication, it looks like Russia is trying to end it quickly. But the Ukrainian resistance is very strong. And there are also like military issues, you know, for the Russia, Russia side of things where, you know, they have uh, some fuel issues, you know, food issues, shortages, and this has created like, like a very prolonged time frame. Um, because of this, as I mentioned just now, the Fed is likely to take a very more measured approach to rate hikes. Um, if you pay attention last year, right, late last year, um, actually the Fed took a pretty aggressive tone in terms of what was going to happen this year, but they've moderated that tone uh, a lot. What this means is that um, the, the, the path forward is not very straightforward. Uh, it's very likely that we will see multiple, uh, you know, pico cycles of corrections in the middle, uh, up, down, up, down. That's really been happening over the past few weeks. Um, and uh, we don't actually know when the big rate hikes will come in. So, you know, at this point, it's really anybody's sort of uh, game. So, yeah, I've given you a very quick run through of like what's going on in the market. Uh, I think this section probably will be good to get some q and I think some of you might have broader questions about the market. So I'll pass the time on to, to Jackie. Yeah. Um, so if you all have any questions, you can post on the chat. Um, I think for this section, uh, for those of you who uh, want a, a, you know, a, a, a low down on what's happening in the space right now, why are we in a bear market? Um, essentially, these are the stuff that's happening right now. Um, you know, interest rate, inflation, um, those are the stuff that's affecting the whole macro economy. Um, and it sort of like puts a cap or like a lot of downward pressure on, on how much or how far crypto can move, right? Uh, which is why over the last three months, you know, we have been, you know, uh, 
you know, like crashing a little bit. If you look at Bitcoin, right, the high was like 69,000. Right now, it's like, I don't know, like 30 plus to 40,000, almost 50% drawdown. Um, so yeah, I think it's a little bit hard to be very bullish right now. Um, but also to me, I always feel like it's also a bit ridiculous to be net bearish for to uh, for crypto lah. um so i think we're, we're a little bit in a uncertain market right now because of all these factors the war the interest rate and whatnot um yeah so fahan uh what's qt uh uh quantitative i think it's quantitative easing yes yeah so um i think just just for everyone's like uh uh, knowledge right um, I think one of the key messages we really wanted to share for everyone is like the, the correlation with the equity market because um, for, for, I really do realize a lot of people don't spend that much time you know paying attention to the broader market um, but it, it's super important because um, if you look at the cycle and, and we'll talk about more of this a bit later right mm -hmm. Um, you, you, will, you will understand that these cycles are super, like, really, really important on how you preserve wealth. So, um, you know, everyone wants to make it, right? But the, uh, the truth is that it's two components. One is, you know, making your money. The second part is preserving it. And preserving it across cycles is actually something very, very challenging for most people. You know, and so, you know, in, in times of, you know, in these situations, like, uh, it's always good to take profit. It's always good to so be cautious. And uh, in the next two sections, we'll share a little bit more about, you know, how you should think about risk management as well as some strategies there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess not many questions here. Then we'll yeah. just proceed. Yeah. Okay. So uh, risk management. Okay. I, I pulled this graph up, right? Uh, so that uh, I'm not trying to scare everybody, uh, but um, if you look at this, graph right it, you know like everything that happened before 2021 seems very immaterial um, but if you look at this uh, red box here uh, this was uh, the mega drawdown in you know 2018 uh, to 2019 right where uh, most of the people who were very early in crypto actually lost almost all their money and those that ultimately made it you know had to hold for a very prolonged cycle um, I want to highlight two things. One is that um, at that point of the cycle, it was a very different crypto world, right? Uh, it was a very small community. Uh, also, ecosystems were not built up that uh, robustly. And the smart contract ecosystem, which is like what's really been driving growth in the decentralized space, uh, was still very, very, very nascent. Um, so if you think about it, the fact that most people actually suffered like almost 85, 90% drawdowns at that point in time, is a pretty scary phenomenon. Uh, would it happen again? Uh, I wouldn't rule that out, you know, to be very honest, because uh, two things, right? Uh, one thing about crypto today is that there's a lot more liquidity. That's good. But the, the not so good thing is that uh, there's also a lot of projects building which are not really genuine. So a lot of liquidity will be drained from these projects, you know, when the cycle crashes. Um, and it's also open question whether uh, a lot of the projects that people are super hyped about are they really sustainable? Like, for example, a game like X Infinity, is it sustainable? Uh, even, you know, broader platforms like DeFi platforms, like uh, I'm sure a lot of you DGen people are in Solidly and stuff like that. Um, is that sustainable over like a really serious bear market? And I think these things are like really, really important when, you know, we think about the market in general. So uh, don't forget, this actually happened before and a lot of people actually lost most of their money uh, during that period. So what is most important for, for all of us, right? Um, it's really down to your appetite for risk. So I, I would say two things. The, the first thing is that you do need to assess your portfolio. And this portfolio uh, is in relation to the other assets in your portfolio. For example, how much cash you have, uh, how much income you take in, and your monthly obligations, as well as some other investments you have in your portfolio. Um, the most important thing is to be comfortable with the percentage of your holdings in crypto. If you are not comfortable, you know, if you feel like every day you're checking the price, uh, you, you should consider trimming this down, uh, you know, for your own mental sanity, as well as for your own financial security. Um, okay, beyond that, right, once you sort of make that decision of how much percent of your, um, you know, net assets you want in crypto, the second most important thing is how do you allocate your assets, right? Um, how much of it is in stable coins? 
how much of it is in uh, Bitcoin and core L1s, you know, like, like ETH, uh, how much of it is in altcoins, which, you know, are very volatile, how much in meme coins, and how much in NFTs, right? Um, you do have to consider the liquidity and risk profile for each segment. Um, so um, what we would strongly recommend is for everyone to hold a percentage of your assets in stables. Uh, from my own conversations with various people, uh, this number is actually very uh, wildly varying for different people. Uh, some people have like 10%, some people have 30%, some people have 40%. Uh, so, you know, you really do need to think about this question. Um, the second thing I want to make very like a very strong point is that uh, in, a, in a situation like currently, right, uh, do avoid leverage positions if you cannot afford it. Um, if you are at risk of liquidation from, you know, moves in price of like 5 to 10%, I would really, really recommend you not to, to play the leverage uh, game in terms of futures uh, and, and puts, you know, um, and, and just be very careful because uh, there have been many, many examples of people that lost like huge amounts of money uh, just because, you know, they were really not careful. Um, so how, how should we play it, right? Um, like what Jackie said, you know, um, structurally, the market is still very sound, like at many, many levels. So um, it's very important for us to really think about uh, how we rotate our assets. So if you look at the price charts, right, I, I pulled out ETH and uh, AXS, uh, which is a fairly established uh, and quite large market cap game token, right? Um, you see like even for something like that, which is a lot of liquidity, um, it's actually down almost double of even you know from from the peak, um, and you look at the graph, the charts right, they look quite similar. So the magnitude of change is actually uh, much larger for alts, and because of this, like there are really three sort of things that are happening right now. Um, a lot of people uh, move from alts to BDC or ETH. A lot of people are rotating off alts into other L ones like you know Avalanche, Solana, etc. Um, and a lot of people have been moving out of NFTs to ETH. So that's also, you know, a trend that has been really going on in the market. Uh, but rotation is super important. So, um, you know, in terms of like the, the risk spectrum, uh, the safer play in a situation like this is really to move capital into like broader assets that, that have a higher correlation in the market. Like for example, BDC, ETH, uh, et cetera, rather than taking on that magnitude of risk uh, for alts. Okay, so we'll get into like stable coins, right? Because um, the, the amount of money people hold in stables varies a lot. Uh, but in the current market condition, you see that, uh, you know, a lot of people are moving into stables to protect value. Um, on this end, right, uh, tokens such as Luna have performed comparatively well uh, because, you know, Luna itself is a token to balance the, the nexus with UST. Um, for stable coins, uh, it's very important to, to know that if you are holding stables, uh, you can use them. Stable coins are productive assets. Uh, the parallel I would give you is, uh, you know, like, uh, holding you know dollars in a bank, uh, choosing to put them in a fixed deposit account for higher rates. Uh, in DeFi, is also what you can do, and uh, we'll share a few a few platforms that you can you know look at and, and focus on. Um, so yeah, stable funds. Let's let's talk about this right. So um, Anchor is probably the one most familiar to a lot of you. Like um, I think a lot of lunatics in the groups. Um, so you're still getting your really really high APY. Um, two things I would say about Anchor. Uh, the first thing is uh, there was a point a month plus ago, right, that there was actually a lot of fight on Anchor uh, because the, the incentive pool was looked like it was going to be drained uh, and then it subsequently top, got topped up. Um, the other thing that happened was that uh, they created a fund which basically would try to back uh, you know, Anchor, Anchor yield with uh, Bitcoin. Um, that was a very big announcement. Uh, actually, nothing tangible has been done yet, uh, but that created a lot of like market uh, sort of good sentiment in the market. And that basically uh, helped a lot of people like regain confidence in Anchor. So you can still yield your 90.5%. A um, few other platforms here. I think just want to give you, uh, you know, more sort of uh, um, platforms you can use, right? Uh, 100 Finance on Phantom offers 5 to 15% on various pools. Uh, Platypus, which is a stablecoin protocol on Avex, you get 7-8% base and you get 30 plus percent boosted. Uh, Spooky Swap, you get 7% on a stablecoin pool and Convex, 5-40% to 40 on various pools. Um, I'm going to pause uh, for, uh, I'm going to switch my screen, just give me a second, uh, just to show you some of these uh, protocols.
Sorry, just give me a second. Anyone else farming at other stable farms that we never include here? Oh, everyone is just farming at Anchor Protocol like me. <laughs> okay, so um well I, I cannot see I cannot see your okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, just giving people more options because everyone loves anchor, right? Uh so great. I I I don't know whether any of you anchored some uh encountered some of the withdrawal issues on anchor before, but please always err on the side of caution. Uh, we'll talk about some of the risk uh, in the next slide. Uh, but hundred finance, uh, you know, on Phantom, you can scroll down. You can look. Uh, basically, you can supply various assets like Neem, Dai, USDC, um, and they give you various APRs. These are actually pretty juicy, in my opinion. Uh, so if you do want to use this protocol, uh, please do it at your own risk. Uh, but uh, liquidity is still fairly healthy. You know, they show you the market metrics of uh, the platform. And basically, it's, it's a lending platform. So you are depositing stable coins to help uh, collateralize the platform. Um, another protocol that came up quite, quite uh, recently, right? It's called Platypus. Uh, so if you go to Platypus Finance, like it's, it's like a DEX. Uh, but if you scroll down to the pools, um, it's a stable swap protocol. So, you know, you can deposit basically uh, different types of stable coin assets on Avalanche. Um, and basically, you can see, uh, you know, uh, what, what the rates are. So there's always a base APR, which is for you to stake and deposit your tokens uh, without doing anything else. Uh, but I think how they incentivize users is this thing called VE, PDP. Um, most of you will have been more familiar to, on the VE concept with what happened solidly. Uh, basically, they encourage you to lock and invest your Platypus tokens. And uh, this will create uh, varying types of uh, boosts uh, for your farm, you know, in these stable protocols. Uh, do consider using this. I think Platypus is something that is really gaining prominence and it's also supported by quite a few uh, VCs. Uh, Spooky Swap on Phantom, you know, another uh, something that might be quite familiar to all of you who use Phantom. Uh, if you go to Phantom, you can, if you go to Spooky Swap, you can see quite a lot of pairs, like uh, even the non-double-sided stable pairs have pretty juicy APR. Um, but if you scroll down, um, let me just rank that APR. Yeah, you can see that you know you can actually uh, stake a stable coin protocol for like seven percent. Uh, this USDC TUSD. Uh, so TUSD is a true uh, USD. So you know this is also pretty like I would say much a uh, relatively safer kind of uh, you know pair for you uh, if you want to consider. Um, later on in the Q and A, like if anyone else has you know any interesting protocols, we have open discussion. Uh, but these are just some of the examples that we wanted to share with you to explore in your free time. Uh, I think bear markets are always good to explore like the safer side of things, right? The less degen side. Uh, that's always important when you are rotating or thinking about how you want to deploy uh, your assets. Yeah, so uh, let me just move back to the uh, presentation. Okay, everyone can see, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, like sounds too good to be true, right? Um, so why, why, why do they give you such high yield for stablecoin farming? Okay, like two reasons, right? Um, for for, for, for uh, UST uh, on Anchor, it's really to onboard new users, right, with money. So, um, okay, think about it. Like if you start a business, right, um, how would you incentivize users to your platform, right? You, you give them stuff, right? Free stuff, or you pay for advertising, right? In the DeFi world, there's no need to advertise. So how do they do it? They basically give you yield, Right, and that entices you to join. Uh, if you look at the TVL uh, on on Terra, right, it has grown at an exponential pace, which also shows that this approach has been very successful and creates like a virtuous cycle. But why is it like this? I think there's a there are a few risks that you need to really consider when it comes to stable coins. Uh, the first is the risk of depegging. Uh, if you are in the Terra ecosystem long enough, you will have seen a certain uh, time periods where UST was not one is to one, you know, and that created quite a lot of panic. Um, there was also risk of depegging for, you know, coins like uh, uh, MIM, uh, where, you know, there were some basically the issues around, uh, you know, the frog nation uh, really, really created some challenges on the end. So, you know, depegging for algo stables is a very real risk, I would say. Uh, and you do need to consider this when you put your money or like or are, are exposed to these type of tokens. Uh, hacks and exploits, uh, this one is it's really important to remember that when you deposit into a DeFi protocol, you are always at risk. Um, so most of these DeFi protocols have pretty uh, robust security audits. Some don't. So um, for these type of stable farms, I would really encourage everyone to use those that are more popular, that have more TVL, 
and they have a lot more users because you might come across some very degen farm that gives you like 200% on your stables. But typically these are very new protocols that are just emitting tokens. And there's actually very high risk that your money might all be gone. Um, the last point, um, this one sounds very black swan, but still possible. Um, so even for collateralized stable coins like USDC and Tether allegedly, right? Um, there is risk that, uh, you know, the collateralization ratios somehow become insufficient. Um, this risk was very prominent last year, actually. You know, um, for Tether in particular, there was always this question of did they really have the assets to back up the stable coin? Um, and now, even now, right, it's still a bit of a question mark. I would say that it might be more of a black swan event, but you sh everyone should be still aware, right, that holding uh, even assets like USDC still have an element of risk. It is not completely risk-free, uh, as some people think. Uh, because of this, it's super important that you actually consider uh, what you want to hold. Because your choice of stable coin is, is, is also important in the broader context of the market. Uh, we haven't seen uh, a stable collapse, you know, or rather a very popular stable collapse at this point. Um, but in very severe market conditions, it is possible. So I think um, it is a risk that you know, everyone should be really, really aware of uh, uh, on this end. Okay, so uh, we'll go to Q&A. Uh, Jackie, I'll pass, pass the time back to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for, for this section, I think it's more of, uh, we. I think Clinton share a little bit more about the various uh, stable farms um, that you all can uh, explore if you are looking around to for places to farm your stable coin. Like for, for some of you who may not be familiar, right? So stable coins, there are a lot of formats or like there are a lot of like, uh, you know, different uh, stable coins around. Uh, you might be, I guess, a little bit confused. Um, it could be confusing to me also, but the main stable coin uh, on EVE is basically DAI. Uh, and, um, you know, for, for let's say, uh, there's also MIM, uh, which is called Magic Internet Money. I actually don't really know. I'm not very confident with MIM. Uh, but basically, MIM is, uh, is packed to $1. La. For all stable coins, you can trust that it will uh, always be one is to one. La. Um, and another one that's quite popular is basically UST. Um, it's the, uh, the stable coin in the whole Terra ecosystem. Um, and then for uh, FTM, they have their own format of... Um, you know, uh, stable coins that they use in, in their ecosystem on AVEX, they have their own format of, uh, they have the rep version of stable coins that they use. Uh, but basically, it all means the same thing. Like it's just one USD is to one USD, right? Um, so uh, let me see. Uh, um, there are some questions. Um, B, B for ice eyes. Why is the U so high? Is there any risk? Um, Clinton, you want to answer this question? Yeah, so... so I mean, these are the key risks. Um, to be very honest, right? Uh, I, I, maybe I'll explain a bit about algo stable coins. So um, for collateralized stable coins, right? The idea is that for every uh, dollar that's issued, there's something backing it, right? This gives you a lot of security, right? That there's some real uh, asset behind the token. The problem with this is that, is it scalable? Because essentially, right? You have a lot of collateral that is locked up, you know, that's not really productive. And how do you really grow the ecosystem from this perspective? So the, the solution that has come up is really that they use, we use this thing called algo stables, which is, um, you know, these stable coins are created with some sort of collateralization ratio, right? But it also relies on balancing mechanisms, you know, that would pack uh, basically the token one is to one is to USD. Uh, there are buyback mechanisms and burn mechanisms, like for example, in USD and, 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 and uh, on the Terra ecosystem. Uh, with Luna. So um, because algo stables have become so prominent, uh, the depegging risk is what uh, you are really taking on when you, you, you know, keep your capital in these pools. Um, when you stake these uh, tokens within the pools, right, you are inadvertently uh, locking part of your tokens. Uh, some of the stablecoin farms actually have a time period for you to deposit your tokens. And because of that, um, they are encouraging everyone to lock their tokens because if you lock your tokens or stake your tokens, then you are in a way securing the ecosystem. Uh, imagine how scary it would be if like we don't know, like if you know everyone has UST, right? But you don't know how much UST is staked, right? Like just people have them in their wallets. And how does that work? So um, in a way, like it's kind of a security concept. Uh, also like 
I guess for, for UST in particular, for Terra ecosystem, they want to encourage people to really use UST as the preferred stable. So they are also compensating you for that because they want you to use that token. They want you to be in a Terra ecosystem uh, and they want you to basically like interact more with other protocols in the ecosystem uh, with UST as a token. So uh, MIM is similar. The MIM ecosystem is quite vibrant. Uh, that took a really big hit with you know, what happened with the Frog Nation uh, saga, uh, especially on Wonderland. Uh, in time, uh, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of money, um, but um, in a way, it's also another ecosystem where they try to encourage you to use meme, to borrow meme, to basically lock meme, uh, and that it helps to create a very virtuous cycle. So I think that's how I really like explain it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the second question, uh, Gene, so they don't know how to farm. Uh, so farming is, uh, I think, is relatively straightforward. Um, you just need to. Um, you know, connect your wallet over there and then just commit uh, the funds inside. And then every day you see returns. Are. So like Anchor Protocol, for example, you just go to anchorprotocol.com slash uh, earn, I think. Um, and after that, um, you will come to a page. Maybe Clinton, you want to show the, the, the page yourself, anyone on the farms? Um, uh, Give me a second. Yeah. yeah, so what we do, uh, you just basically connect your wallet commit your 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 uh stable coin inside and then every day you'll get rewarded um um uh, your you lah. And then I also wanted to share something that uh, most of the uh farms right they reward you in their native token um so like for example for anchor protocol right um you although the reward is like 19% um but you don't get for example let's say you deposit $1000 worth of uh, UST right you don't get Nineteen dollars, um, but you actually get nineteen dollars worth of Anchor Protocol. You don't get nineteen um, UST la. Um, yeah. So this is Anchor Protocol. Uh, is the one that's uh. I think I think the user experience is quite straightforward. Already. So on the top right corner, you just click click connect. Um, and then you'll be able to uh uh Anchor Protocol will connect to your wallet, and then you'll be able to deposit your money inside your ust inside and then straight away uh they will show you the expected interest per day and every single day you can go to your page um which is the second tab and you'll be able to see your uh number of uh anchor uh anchor token that you can claim and then you can sell it off already lah. yeah so a lot of farms are fairly straightforward you just need to connect and move your asset over to the various uh, ecosystems same as, same as for spooky swap as well so if you go to Spooky Swap, right? Uh, what you needed to do, let's say for example, the where's the yeah this one, um. So you just add, you just click the get the LP token, and then after that you add uh one one to the ten dollars ten dollars each, and then after that with the LP tokens ready, uh you can just commit to the farm and start farming the 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 reward lah. Yeah, um. If you need any resources, you can ask um. Uh, you know, uh, the community on Change Brief, or we have articles on that. Um. Yeah. So hopefully you get started on your farming journey very soon. Um. The rest of the questions. Um. Yeah. So there are a lot more high, more degen farm that are higher APYs. Uh. Some of the community, I think you are more degen. Uh, try crypto pools. I have personally never tried that. Um. WX exchanges on the waves. Uh earning the wave token right um jay also uh suggested us to check out tranquil finance um 30 plus percent on usdc uh to me i feel like it's a bit high <laughs> which means the risk is slightly higher la. um to me i feel like anchor protocol is probably the it's too big to fail already so they have to keep the musical chair going right uh so i think 20 percent is the highest risk that i'm willing to uh, jump on the rest of the stable farms are mostly like eight percent, ten percent, which is fairly common and uh fairly safe lah. Um, there are a lot of those higher degen stuff. Uh, that one if you are more advanced, you can go and check it out lah. Um, let me see. Uh, S Y say there are two protocols trying to be the convex for uh P T P. I actually don't know as this Ac and Vector. <laughs> this sounds very uh. Clinton, do you yeah, know anything about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So so um. You know, like for all of you that are interested in, okay, like if you guys have tried uh, solidly, right, I would really encourage you to check out Platypus and the stuff that's building around Platypus. Uh, because conceptually, um, how this will evolve is it will evolve in a very similar way to solidly, uh, you know, in terms of like the, the yield mechanisms. Um, so 
uh, Platypus is encouraging you to lock your PDP tokens, but essentially, right, uh, people are building on top of these like different layers. Uh, so, um, you know, Solidly came out as like a V3-3 kind of thing. And then uh, Solid Dex, you know, came out. Maybe I'll just show everyone. Give me a second, I'll pause. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Uh, can us is UST USDT? No, UST is uh US Terra, USDT is uh Tether. Yeah, uh, the UST is basically yeah Terra chain stablecoin. So I'm just <laughs> reading down the yeah uh the, the, the JR is talking about the musical chair thing for Anchor. Where do you guys see the break even point from? Which Anchor? Um, wow, that one's a that's the billion dollar question. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, um, Solidex. Yes, back to you, Clayton. Okay, uh, so Solidly was is basically the the, the hot it new launches thing. The, yeah, the hot new thing. But basically it's a DEX. And the, the, the key here is that basically you can uh lock your tokens, you know, your liquidity tokens to vote and bribe for more emissions. So let's <laughs> say you choose a token to lock, right? You can basically lock it to vote for more emissions for your pool. So, okay, um, you take a step back, right? Essentially, okay, in the old model, right? How it works is that you lock your tokens, they distribute you, um, you, right? Depending on how much liquidity is in the pool. If the liquidity is super high, right? Uh, like a lot of people are depositing, then the yield will be much lower because they want to incentivize people to lock liquidity for other tokens. But here, basically what they're trying to do is to say that, hey, let's let the community decide, right, which liquidity pool they want to lock their tokens in, right, and actually use that to vote for more emissions for their pool. So it's like a layer two Ponzi, if you ask me. Um, so it's pretty amazing, actually. Like, this is a crazy experiment that might work, right? Um, but even more amazing is that you can build on top of that. So not only can you, um, like, lock your tokens on Solidly to vote for emissions, you can use Solidex to lock the liquidity tokens that you create on Solidly, right? To get more tokens. So you can basically get APR here, like for different pairs, right? Um, and they pay you in um, basically a solid token and a sex token. Uh, yeah. So these are the two tokens that, uh, you know, they use to reward you. Um, there will be another one that's coming out called uh, OX Dex. Uh, so, uh, sorry, OXD. Uh, they're releasing V2 soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, but, um, you know, um, you, at the end of the day, like, it's really these type of protocols that are innovating in DeFi. And uh, Platypus ecosystem, like, on, on the Avalanche side will be building towards uh, something like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a little bit degen. La. So um, so for those yeah. of you like me, so I have never... <laughs> I, I understand a little bit about Solidex, but I never play and commit to it. Like, I feel like, like Clinton says, this is a little bit too uh, Ponzi for me. Uh, so, yeah. so, so the, the it's Ponzi okay. is really crazy. Yeah. yeah so, so, so uh, Jackie, just, just to add a bit, right? So, yeah. I, I saw some questions on sex, right? Okay, yeah. like, they not only give you the reward token, right? Because what do you do when you get a reward token? You dump it, right? You sell it. What they do is they allow you to convert solid. Uh, to this thing called solid sex, which you can lock. And you can also lock your sex long term, uh, which gives you an insane APR, uh, which also means that what they're trying to do is to encourage you to not dump your tokens and lock them for further Ponzi. So uh, it, it's like three layers of Ponzi at this point. There will probably be four, five, six layers. Uh, be prepared. But um, for all of you that are like curious or interested, please check out these protocols. Like, uh, you know, um, it's super interesting and just spend some time looking at it, you know, like, you know, I think even if you don't want to participate, it's just interesting to see uh, what people are doing in the space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just understand why they're doing it. And like, uh, it's just basically this whole game theory thing, like who's going to sell first yeah. and it's, it's protocol is going to try to like, uh, you know, try to make you not, uh, you know, sell and dump your token. Um, but for those of you who thinks that this is a bit too complicated and too cheap, right? You're not alone. It's too complicated for me also. So don't need to care about this kind of stuff. I am just farming on the safer stuff, the, you know, 8% to 20% uh, stable farms. Uh, I think those are good enough for me. It's better than my bank account already. So I feel like, you know, if you are not that 
degen. Uh, I think just found those uh, stable one lah. Um, which is fine already. Yeah. Yeah. Ching Chingy say yes, it's very very cheap. It's very cheap for me also. So I it's 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 okay. This is for a small group of people only. Um, and I don't even <laughs> look at this lah. Um. I think those are most of the question already. Uh, there's someone Zinix asked, what's the general strategy for doing LP? Uh, I mean, Clinton, you got anything to add on? I think LP is just, um, I think for stable LP, uh, I think it's fairly straightforward. It's just uh, supplying the, 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 the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so LP, like, you'll be exposed to impermanent loss, right? So the question is like, uh, the first question you need to ask yourself is, do these tokens trade uh, in lockstep? So I'll give you an example that of two tokens that trade generally in lockstep, right? Uh, Jewel, on, which is the DeFi Kingdom token, and Harmony. Why, right? Because 95% of Harmony volumes are from DeFi Kingdom. So they trade pretty much together. And if they are together, right, you don't encounter this thing called impermanent loss, uh, which basically is a result of changes in the ratio of two tokens. Um, for stable coin pairs, right, if you're confident that they will keep their pack, when you deposit one USDC, you are depositing one meme in the stable pool as well, which also means that you will not encounter any impermanent loss, as long as you're confident that the two tokens will retain their pack. Uh, and then the third consideration you have is, of course, the, the yield, right? What's the APR on these tokens? Uh, I would say typically APR is a lot higher when there's risk of depegging. So for example, Phantom Tomb, uh, there is risk, right? Therefore, 94% here. And all of these tokens like basically have varying degrees of uh, you know uh, variations in terms of the, the, the way they trade. So um, uh, if you want to be very safe, start with a stable coin pair, like uh, 10%. Okay, I know inflation is like gonna probably gonna hit five, six, seven percent soon, right? Uh, you're still getting three percent, keeping it in the bank is like you're down seven percent. So you know, do think about these things uh, as you plan your money going forward. Yeah. Okay. Um Jay asks, how do you onboard to FTM? Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can, uh, so for me, uh, what I do is that uh, if you're on KuCoin, uh, KuCoin allows you to do a direct um, you know, transfer to your FTM uh, wallet, the, your, Ethereum, your Metamask wallet on the Ethereum network. Uh, it, uh, Metamask wallet on the FTM network, sorry. Uh, so I can just do a direct transfer of my FTM on KuCoin onto the... FTM Metamask, and then after that, you can straight away connect to whatever farms on the FTM already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I want to introduce uh, everyone to this uh, bridge called Synapse. I don't know whether any of you use it that much, but um, personally, it's a great tool. So um, for Phantom, right, like um, you can basically choose the network you want on uh, uh, Synapse, and you can bridge your tokens across chains. Yep. So let's say you have tokens on Avalanche, you can get them on Phantom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would encourage using this tool uh, because in the past, bridges were very clumsy. Uh, I think right now, bridges are a lot more sophisticated. So you can basically move tokens between networks easily using tools like Synapse. Yeah. Yeah. This is, for example, if let's say your, your tokens or your E, for example, are already on the various uh, chains la, and then you have yep. to move them to the, to the, to the FTM network. La. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, Andrew point out uh, another important point is your reward token appreciating or depreciating. If it's depreciating value, no point to farm. You're right. Um, yeah. So so this is something that is. Uh, the reason is because uh, your return is in the native token. So like for example, pancake swap on Binance, right? Uh, you farm it and then you get rewarded in cake token. Um, although the APY might be less than hundred percent or twenty percent or fifty percent, right? Um, they give you the token, but every day is crashing. Uh, so then the APY might not be as high as you think it is, lah. Yeah. Um, we Xiong asks, what do you think is a good way to play the solidly ecosystem, Mister Clinton? Um, I think uh, the best way to play it is to wait a little bit. I think wait for uh, OX DAO to launch their new protocol to compete for the VE, you know, three three token VE curve tokens, like, and then see how this plays out. So, um, reason being is that I think a lot of uh liquidity will get cannibalized to the other platform. Yeah. So you have two big players like fighting it out, right? And then I think after that, then you can slowly choose, right? Um, but I would uh, encourage you to be careful with solidly. Um, it's a pretty degen thing. Um, but I've seen a lot of assets on solidly depack. 
So uh, one token that has been depegging is like the ancillary spirit tokens. Uh, so please be very careful because you, you could lose like quite a significant chunk of your capital just from the, the impermanent loss, yeah. Okay, um, some other questions. Uh, wait, wait what, what, one more section is it? Oh shit. But yeah, one more short section. Short section. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, Levi, Levi asks, is the bridge risky like the wormhole hack? I think all bridges, there'll be some risk. Lah. Uh, but I think this one should be quite okay. Uh, why is impermanent loss? Oh no. <laughs> we need to, uh, this one, sorry, we need, this is another topic. Uh, we will have an article on that. So, <laughs> uh, so we will uh, share that. Uh, check out changedebrief.com sorry <laughs> is Synapse similar to QuickSwap uh, no Synapse is basically a bridge uh, QuickSwap is a DEX Uniswap is a DEX uh, so one is bridging you just move your asset from one chain to another uh, QuickSwap is like a uh, decentralized exchange uh. yeah Uniswap also decentralized exchange uh, da, 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 da. yes okay let's go for the last uh, last section and then we'll, we'll, we'll go for Q&A okay okay yeah um, short one, one, one more yeah. short section so I think a lot of people also like ask about how, how you can invest in this market, right? Uh, so uh, I think the one big message I want everyone to like just take away from today is like um, in a bear market, you can buy stuff at cheap. Like that's a that's the thing that most people know, right? Like it's kind of the, um, but um, I would encourage everyone to focus more on spot purchases in certain situations because the risk profile is very different. If you take a leverage trade, right? You might get liquidated if it goes directionally either way. Uh, depending on what you play and um, that basically you lose all your capital right, if you get liquidated so please be very careful um, there are three principles that you should really follow the first one is you know always have sufficient capital to pull the trigger when when buying opportunities arise um, you see this in nfts a lot right a lot of people have to sell stuff to buy other stuff and that creates a lot of pressure when there's selling pressure in a particular collection um, the selling pressure can be very deep Right. And in this case, like you never ever want to be selling into a lot of weakness. So um, I think similar for tokens, you know, always have extra money you have set aside uh, in case you want to buy more. Um, DCA, dollar cost averaging is a very important concept in situations like this. Why, right? Because you can't time the market. It's very, very hard to time the market. Even if you manage to time it, it's really more or less luck, right? Unless your technical analysis is so solid and you basically beat everyone else in the market. Um, but if for, for most people, most of us, like you do want to be very conservative in how you deploy capital. So let's say you have 30% of your portfolio in stable coins. You shouldn't deploy 30% at one shot in a particular moment. Like always be careful. Um, so I think, you know, that, that's something that is very important to remember. Um, because there's so much going on, right? Um, I would really encourage everyone to focus on a few tokens, right? That is in that you have high conviction in, and to accumulate them with bigger size. Um, fragmenting your liquidity, like investing in a lot of things, is generally not a good idea in a in a bearish situation. In a bull market, right? There was a period of time where whatever you bought, you would have done well. But I think as the market has matured, this is no longer true. Which also means that um, you know, the market is trending towards a situation where it does reward people who do more research, who really spend more time understanding the market. And that, those are just very important principles uh, to keep in mind. Um, for alts, right? Uh, you know, earlier I talked about how most of them corrected like 50 plus percent. Uh, so I put the Chinese uh, you know, phrase here for a uh, crisis. Called, it's called weighty. And basically uh, it's quite elegant because half of it means danger. Half of it means opportunity. And the meaning is that in every crisis, there is danger and opportunity. So um, for alts, I think uh, I would encourage the community to seriously look at alts that they believe in. Because there are many alt tokens that are actually, you know, alt for protocols that are building very, very genuine and good products. Um, and because they will drop so much in price, right? Because of market gyrations, uh, you have a chance to buy them at unprecedented prices, right? Like really, really you're never going to get the opportunity to buy these tokens at these prices ever again. Um, why is the correction so huge? Most of these tokens don't have very high liquidity at this point. Uh, so if you look at, if you just pull up CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, um, you can look at the top 100 tokens, top 200 tokens, rank them by uh, you know, trading volume and liquidity. You can see very clearly like um, some of these tokens like really, really uh, have very limited liquidity and any price movement, like any movement in buy and sell actually like spikes the token quite significantly. So um, do 
like really, really focus on the protocols that you believe in, right? And you can really maybe pick up some things that, you know, you, you really didn't have the chance to buy before at the previous prices. Last one. Okay, NFTs. Uh, this is a really crazy time for NFTs. Um, on the left, you see this. I don't know whether you guys know, but it's called Kevin. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, like uh, Jackie, so Jackie and I did the NFT session. Uh, how, how long ago was it, Jackie? Like, uh, two, weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks ago, ago. Yeah. yeah. And back then, back then, right, it's just three weeks ago, right, NFTs were doing pretty well. Like, everything was great. Um, in the last two weeks, uh, there have been a lot of blow-ups. Okay, so the biggest blow-up recently has been this thing called Pixelmon. Uh, they promised a Pokemon in Web3, right? And they delivered nothing close to a Pokemon. Uh, a lot of the videos that they posted initially were, were not really like, they were like Fiverr videos that they hired people to produce. They were not representing the game. And they actually used Fiverr artists to create like pixel formats of really, really bad characters like the one on the left. Um, because of these blowups, you know, liquidity has really been drained. You know, um, just for context, right? Uh, Pixelmon minted out and at, at, at three ETH per per token, and this Ooh. was the result. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so this is like about ten thousand US dollars at that time for one of these. Uh, and uh, recently, if you're on Twitter, you will see a lot of liquidity risk uh, concerns about NFTs, and you do see a lot of uh, prices correcting quite significantly. However, what I want to say is that um. Nothing has really changed. Um, I do believe that there was a lot of hype about NFTs and there still is. Um, but if you believe in a project, if you like the team, if you think that they are building a, a game or you know, a brand or something like that and that you believe in, uh, this is also a chance for you to buy these NFTs at unprecedented prices. So uh, I do want to give an example, right? Um, uh, last year, when when the tokens were basically uh, going to like NFTs were basically going to to to, to crap, right? Um, there were many NFT collections that really like nose dived, right? Uh, one collection I was following was called Capsule House. Uh, so this token went all the way down to zero point one at some point, right? From like zero point three, zero point four, and then this year shot up to as high as about three to four ETH uh, floor. Right. And right now it's gone back to like about 1.5. So um would we'll encourage everyone to really spend time in the in the space. Like bear market situations are great times to spend more time researching rather than like really blind throwing, blindly throwing money. And this research might really come in handy when you make your decisions because uh people are more careful now. And it's generally a good thing that people are more careful because it also means that money will move to like uh, better projects, better quality protocols, you know, and, and overall it's, it's also good for the market. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for today. Uh, we will have another short Q&A. Um, I think I'll pass the time back to Jackie. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I guess one, one of the uh, two main questions is almost related. Um, the first question is, Mr. Clinton, what would your top two altcoins be if you could give some financial advice, but not financial advice, you know? Yeah, yeah, not not financial advice, right? But um, okay, like it depends how you define alts. Like people have very different definition of alts. Uh, but I would say that uh, some tokens that you should look at that are not okay. That probably people are really looking at. Like one example is uh, L two tokens on Ethereum. Uh, so there are a few examples, right? Like um, IMX is one which has had its problems. Another one is like Metis, you know, which has a lot of hype recently. Um, I would encourage everyone to check out these L2 tokens because uh, they will be important for scaling the Ethereum blockchain. Um, and there'll be a lot of stuff that's going to be built. Um, another ecosystem I think people should pay attention to is Cosmos. Um, so some of you might very be familiar with Atom, um, but there have been many tokens that are, are, are coming. Like the most recent one that's coming is called EVMOS. Uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, a protocol that basically enables Cosmos to interact with uh, all uh, Ethereum virtual machine, you know, basically interact, interact with the Ethereum virtual machine. So um, it's creating open cross chain for Cosmos, right? Um, there are new tokens coming out, like two of the biggest ones that have already blown up are like Juno. I'm sure some of you have heard of that uh, as well as uh, Osmo, Osmosis. Uh, so definitely encourage everyone to look at it. And I think outside of that, like, you know, do pay attention to like what's going on in Avalanche. Uh, what's going on in Nia? I think some of these ecosystems are emerging. So I would encourage everyone to look at 
these types of protocols. Um, there are other outs which are like more um, specific, like for example, in gaming or whatever. But I think those, you do need to take a view of the product itself, right? Uh, I think the examples I gave are more ecosystem focused and generally still, I would say, risk profile wise, uh, a little bit safer than some of these other projects, which are like really concentrated in a particular protocol. Yeah, so that's my two cents on this whole thing. Okay. Uh... One question is, what farm and token are you farming on right now? I think stable farms. Uh, for, for me, uh, okay, like, uh, like, okay, like seriously, right, to everyone on this call, um, I think the safest one is still Anchor. Like, I, I was very skeptical about the whole... Anchor uh, protocol. I was very skeptical about Luna and the whole Terra ecosystem from the beginning. Um, I have to say, I am still skeptical. But I cannot deny the amazing traction that they've had, um, the amazing investors that they've had, and basically the ecosystem they've built around the capital. So um, I would encourage everyone to, to look at Terra seriously um, because the TVL that's there is already really, really, you know, insane, insane. in my opinion. Insane, yes. Insane. And it's gone up even more over the last uh, month. Yeah. You know, with, with volatility, right? Actually, more money has flowed into Terra. Is yeah. that good or bad? I don't know. Um, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on the yield because in order to maintain a yield, they need to top it up. They need to top up the incentive pool. Is it sustainable? I think it's still open question. But yeah. as of today, they are doing a great job. So, you know, like give them credit when it's due. And yeah. uh, I, I think anybody who is on it will tell you that it's pretty fast free experience. Yeah. 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 Um... Yeah, for me also the same thing. So like, uh, I'm only farming in uh Anchor Protocol right now. Um, I'm doing some single staking of my native tokens. Uh, but for stable farm, um, I'm om- I'm exclusively on UST right now because it's twenty percent. And actually, it's actually more than twenty percent because every single day the the Anchor token is actually going up and up. Um, and it's it's very crazy right now. Um, and the thing is that actually, uh, if you are, for me right, I deposit my Luna as collateral. Um, the 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 borrow rate of the, uh, your of UST on your collateral right is actually positive right now. So, uh, what I do is that, uh, my Luna is 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 deposit as as collateral right, and then I borrow UST from there. I get uh six five six percent um for borrowing, the UST, and then with the borrowed money right, I then pack it to earn a further twenty percent. Um, so that's. Uh, that's that last so yeah you can loan out your your b loan now so um but yeah so i i think right now um anchor protocol is actually someone tell me it's a ponzi scheme ponzi scheme but it's too big to fail right now it's actually a bit ridiculous right now like, and somehow they just raised like one billion dollar in uh to buy bitcoin as a reserve right um i think that's something that um should again <laughs> keep the musical chair going for another six months i guess um because the reserve right now if you look at the reserve right um, there's about half a billion dollar in reserve right now. Um, so even, uh, so there's money there for you to to pay you the interest. So it's not so bad, lah. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, I think that should be most of the question already. Um, uh, I think there's last 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 question from Jake. What are your thoughts on BPSIDP on Spectrum? Puts it down somewhere. That sound like. Cheap sounds like sounds very foreign to me. Clinton, do you know what is that? No, actually, I, I actually don't. Yeah. So sorry, um, so we are not let them. Yeah. Them <laughs> uh, actually, actually, um, Jackie, on on the on the the Ponzi concept, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I think um. Uh, Ponzi is not a bad word. Okay, I I I want to say this because, uh, okay, like everyone, right? Like if you're curious, right? Go and look at how much money the US Reserve is printing to fund everything. And then ask yourself, is it sustainable? Right. And this is the US government, by the way. This is not, this is not anything else, right? Um, and and just, just think about it a bit. Like, I think once you wrap your head around that, then everything else is easier to wrap your head around. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean it's not a bad thing. Like, so musical chair, as long as it keeps rolling, then. It will be too big to fail, like the US, uh, like the US economy right now, like They owe, they owe like trillions of dollars in debt, lah. So let's see, lah. 
Um, yeah, I think that should be all. Almost 10 o'clock already. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, hopefully, we give you some food for thought. Um, I think it's a, it's a negative, uh, it's sort of a mini bear market right now. Um, like I mentioned, I think the first section, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of like downwards pressure in terms of the from a macro point of view. I feel like it's very hard to imagine us going to. Uh, you know, 100,000 BTC price right now. Um, so uh, with that in mind, you know, uh, we also encourage you all to like, you know, look for opportunities, um, you know, in the in the altcoin space, uh, you know, you can stable farm also. Hopefully you give you some ideas on, you know, um, where are some farms that you should check out? Um, I think it's definitely more, it's definitely better than your 5% sitting in DBS or 2% sitting in DBS or OCBC, right? Um, yeah, so I think these are just some ideas and uh, sharing wanted to share with y'all. Hopefully y'all learned something. Um, let me see. Okay, there's some question. Where can we hear more from? Clinton. Clinton is a busy man. <laughs> so he is he's busy as his day work. Lah. He never shared where he's working, but he's very busy right now. Um, um I don't think he has time to to sort of like uh interact with the community, but he's a, he's, he's in the community lah, somewhere. Lah, uh, but he's just busy with his work. Um yeah. Lah. So hopefully, Clinton, if you are free, you can say hi to our and rest holder or in in Discord, in Discord in Telegram, uh, talk to us and, and whatnot lah. Um, no, no, definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah. And, and also like I think Jackie, I'll I'll catch up with you more on this. Like I think uh we do want to do more for the community. Uh, yeah. I think end of the day, like uh these sessions have like I think we do believe that it is informative. Uh, I think from us also we want to figure out like uh how's the best way to take this forward in the future as well, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'll I'll let I'll leave that to Jackie, the boss man, to. You know, yeah, so I mean, for, for those of you who are, who are staying with us on this call, right? I think one of the stuff that we're thinking about is that actually there's a very, very high chance that this is the last session already. Very high chance. Uh, doesn't mean high, doesn't mean high, uh, last section, but uh, session, but uh, we might be redoing the whole uh, series again because the whole idea of Whack Me series, right? When we first started, right, was that um, we wanted to uh, have a s- session where we can teach people or share with people what we know about DeFi and blockchain. The first session that we did was basically how to get started with MetaMask. What is the de- what is uh decentralized finance? What is DEXs, right? And then the second one was on uh Binance Smart Chain, and then how do you do your swap, right? So it's really more about you know, onboarding the Web 2 people to the Web 3 world. So I feel like, you know, I guess majority of you have uh, stuck with us from Web Me number one until this is number six or number seven already. Um, I think, you know, if we go to Web Me seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right, I think it's a little bit more advanced already. And I feel like we may not be the best uh, people. Do you know some of the questions you asked us, right? I, you know, just now we also cannot answer like, some weird ass protocol, some DGEN protocol. Uh, it's just too much already. And I feel like, we will be deviating already uh, from why we started to do this, right? And also, beyond just that, we want to reach out to more people, right? We want to help more people on board to, you know, the, the, the crypto world, right? So, um, we will do a new session on uh, how to get started with MetaMask. And all of you have a MetaMask already, lah, hopefully, you know. Uh, so, we're just thinking, um, how do we scale this up also? How do we reach out to more people? Uh, we haven't decided yet, but there's a very, very high chance that they may not be... Uh, next session already uh, and we will redo the first one again uh, very, very high chance la. Um, so we're still thinking about it um, yeah still thinking about it and um, yeah also hopefully this has been helpful um, if you all have benefited um, from our sharing uh, please share some of the good stuff that we do uh, to other people invite more people to join the community um, and pay it forward um, and Support our NFT. <laughs> I think that should be all. Um, Clinton, got anything else to to share? Uh, no, I'm just super thankful to everyone. Like, hopefully, it's really been helpful. Uh, I think we, we really try to uh keep it as like simplified as possible because as as Jackie said, the the, the intention of this is really to onboard people and get people interested, and excited, you know, about a lot of things in crypto. Um, I think we will continue in the spirit of that. So uh, whatever we do uh, moving forward will always be in that spirit. So, you know, bring all your friends, um, tell your family, whoever, like anyone interested can join in. Uh, we'll definitely retain, you know, that spirit uh, moving forward as well. Yeah. 
So, okay, feels like a graduation ceremony. <laughs> so, we got no poet with everything yeah. about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think that should be mm-hmm. all. Uh. Um, for NRS holders, uh, you know, we are working very hard to deliver PAUS. We have a lot of announcements coming out in the next two weeks. Uh, you all will be very, very proud. Um, so, thanks, guys. I think that should be all. Uh, the weekend is here. Uh, hopefully, your portfolio is green. Uh, please invest safe and spend some good time with your family this weekend as well. Okay, thanks guys. Adios. Bye-bye.